Hi friend, welcome. Thank you so much for being on this journey. If you're here today for this video, then you have walked this path with Paul through his letter to the Colossians. And I don't know about you, but I have thoroughly enjoyed it. It has been, uh, it's been a good word of encouragement for my heart. So as I sit here and reread this letter of Colossians and ponder all that it is we have learned, I'm sitting here thinking about how we, at least maybe I shouldn't say we, maybe I should say I, often think that we need one more thing to be complete. <laughs> um, and we can think about it in little ways, like maybe we're having someone over for dinner and we need one more item on the menu to make it a complete meal. Uh, maybe it is at work in some capacity, you feel like you're lacking some skill. I've, if only I were better at fill in the blank, and that would be that would be enough that would be all that i need but when we think about it spiritually i think it is really difficult for us like i, I don't know i feel like we have this mentality that we're always looking for something more we need one more thing and that carries over into our spiritual life with christ and i think that paul makes very clear in this letter that we have all we need in Christ. We have all we need to, um, to, to be enough, to be full, to be satisfied, to be complete. So where does that come from? I mean, I think it starts with Paul's understanding of who Christ is. So as I reviewed and I, I tried to, I tried really hard to pick one favorite verse. Friends, I really don't. <laughs> I'll, I'll key in to maybe the closest top one, but I began with these verses in chapter one where Paul just beautifully expounds on who Christ is and how Christ is above all and over all. Uh, this was starting in verse 15 of chapter 1. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. He might be first. He might be above all. He is, like this sounds sort of silly, he is top dog, but he is. He's at the top, he has the highest position. And then Paul goes on in verse 19 to say about Jesus, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. <laughs> so love that, love what Paul, Paul's understanding of who Christ is. Like, I just want to simmer in this. I want to marinate in this, uh, who Christ is. Because when we understand who Christ is, that he is all and all things are for him, that he is, he yeah, he's just above all, that he is number one. And we understand who he is and that he then has reconciled us with himself. He has filled us up with himself. Then we have all we need, right? So my favorite verse kind of speaks to that second, second thought. This is from Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. For in him, in Christ, 
the whole fullness of deity, the whole fullness of God dwells bodily. And you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and all authority. So Paul kind of goes back to that idea that Christ is above all. He has this most high position and he is, yeah, he is fully God. Did you hear that word fullness? He is completely God. Jesus Christ is. And friends, Paul says this to the Colossians, you have been filled in him. You have been filled in him. Uh, there's something about that that brings tears. Um, all the fullness of God we have through Jesus Christ. We have it all. Like, I'm getting goosebumps. I don't feel like I'm articulating it uh, as clearly as I would like to. But I hope that gives you the idea of what I am taking away. We have all we need in Christ Jesus. And he is, he is enough. Like he is fully God. Uh, he satisfies. He makes us full. He makes us complete. So love that. Love that. And then, you know, that, that was kind of like the first half of Paul's letter. That's what I take away. And the second half is then this idea of, so then, walk this way, right? Um, let me see what verses I put down. Uh, this was this was actually in chapter two. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus, so walk in him. But he tells us, Paul explains exactly to the Colossians what this should look like. And he's telling us what this should look like in chapter three, uh, starting at verse five, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, right? This is how we walk in the fullness of Jesus Christ. This is how we reach and take hold of all the treasures that we have in Jesus Christ by walking with him and to him and doing everything for him. But specifically, we need to put to death, therefore, what is earthly. We put to death what is old. And then... <laughs> What do we do? We put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. We put on his compassionate hearts, his kindness, his humility, his gentleness, his patience. Um, we allow his peace to rule in our hearts. And we are thankful. Ah, we... We, we allow the word of Christ to dwell in us, to dwell over our minds, our hearts, our spirits, our bodies, everything. We put on the mind and the heart of Jesus Christ, and it is beautiful. But we really do. We have to put off what is earthly. And Paul doesn't say just put it off. No, he says, kill it kill it. And you might remember back that day, I've left this quote by C.S. Lewis on my desk this whole time. Give me all of you. I don't want so much of your time, so much of your talents and money and so much of your work. I want you, all of you. I have not come to torment or frustrate the earthly man or woman, but to kill it. No half measures will do. I don't want to only prune a branch here and a branch there. Rather, I want the whole tree out. Hand it over to me. The whole outfit, all of your desires, all of your wants and wishes and dreams. Turn them all over to me. Give yourself to me. And I will make of you a new self in my image. Give me yourself. And in exchange, I will give you myself. My will shall become your will. My heart shall become your heart. Oh, don't we want that, friends? Don't we want that? We want the fullness of Jesus Christ, his mind, his heart of compassion and kindness and goodness and love and humility and gentleness. We want it all. We want uh, it. We want, he, like he is so complete. 
He has all the fullness of God in him. And we also want that fullness, that completeness. And he's given it to us. Like we don't have to strive for it. He just says, here, this is why I came. Here it is. Receive it. Be in me. Be found in me. Receive it and receive this new life that I have for you. Uh, friends, my word for this study is fullness. Uh, Christ is all the fullness of God, and in him we have all the fullness of God as well. He wants us to put to death uh, all this earthly that is in us, we are to be crucified with him. We are to surrender this to him. And he will give us, I don't know, it's like putting on new clothes. He will, he will dress us. He will give us himself, his completeness, his fullness, his fullness of God. He will give us his will. Like his will will be our will. Oh, don't we want that, friends? Don't we want that? I hope this has been encouraging to you as it has been for me. And I just want to thank you again for being a part. Truly, I wouldn't dig into the word like I do if you weren't along uh, this journey with me. I feel like we are heart in heart, mind in mind, arm in arm as we seek to know Christ. And not just to know him here, but to enjoy him here, to really experience his fullness, to experience his goodness, to experience his love. So thank you, friend. Thank you for being on this journey.